DNVR Broncos live presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Get over to DraftKings Sportsbook. Use the code DNVR when you sign up to get in on all of the awesome promotions that you unlock when you do so. Coming to you from Studio A here at the DNVR bar where the A stands for... <laughs> this is a tough one. <laughs> I know he started talking slowly too. <laughs> well, I wanted where to say something, A's. but then I've thought twice about uh, it. Probably oh, smart. No. Yeah. Bit yeah, your tongue. Yeah. Oh, go for it. A stands for absolute ripoff. Oh. If oh, you know, you boy. know. Wow. If you know, you know. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, I don't know. Wow. Wow, explain it to us, Oh, Ryan. I do know. <laughs> I do know. <laughs> but from, from everyone, right? <laughs> I don't know it what became, that means. It became a meme because oh, everyone yeah. started doing it yes. yesterday. Yeah. yeah. What yeah. a day. Exactly. Hell of a day. Hell it of was. A day. Don't stop. Pretty <laughs> pretty comical. Don't stop. <laughs> um, all right. Let's get into it. So, well, first of all, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning to the chat as well. Good morning, chat. And good morning to good morning, Alvin chat. No Chipmunks. Alvin No Chipmunk. What does that mean? I think he's just... Anti chipmunks. Wow, that's definitely worse than the other Alvin, right? No offense, Alvin. We like the chipmunks. Oh, yeah, 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 I'm yeah, pro, yeah. We're pro. We're Alvin pro chipmunks. Yes. We're Alvin pro chipmunks. Uh, second favorite Alvin, right there, though. <clears throat> um, yeah, Kamara? here we go. No, that Alvin for sure. Alvin Kamara. Yeah. No, yeah. we like this Alvin better. There's Alvin Williams. I don't know who that is, but it sounds familiar. I think you have Alfred Williams. <laughs> yeah, I think that's who he's thinking of. Yeah. That's, that's possible. Starts with an A, so it works. Alvin Williams was a linebacker at CU. Thank you. Oh yes. wow! Did you not know that? I I that was actually what my gut was telling me, but I didn't want to be wrong. And then when you said Alfred, I was like, wait, maybe that's what my mind was thinking. All <laughs> oh about. wait, he actually was a linebacker. I thought we were. I thought he was joking about Alfred Williams no. saying he's <laughs> a linebacker. More recent player was oh, Alvin. Williams. Wow. Yeah. Alvin was really exciting. I liked him. No wonder it really sounded thick, familiar to you and not for me. Yeah, exactly. Wow. What's um, up with him? All right, so a report came out over the weekend that. I feel like a lot of reports are just like slipping through the cracks right yeah, now. It's report season. I agree. And reports everywhere. This one definitely slipped through the cracks. And I don't really know why because I thought it was big news. Um, but, Zach, do you want to uh, tap into what was put out there? Yeah, why don't you just keep delaying right now? Okay, all right. I, I want to find the exact <laughs> way that he put it. And I have the article right here. Um, okay. So, so delay. Um, so, anyways. <laughs> I'll go uh, quick. In Madden last night, no. I'm just <laughs> um, Actually, there was something in Madden last there night. There was. It was awful. Uh, anyways, essentially, it came out that George Payton is in some hot water, and I just I, I I thought that would be like a top story, like a Broncos Twitter catches on to this and talks about it all day type of thing. Yeah. But I think it came out on Sunday, and. A lot of times the stories that come out on Sunday. How long is it going to take you to find this? <laughs> hey, just, just keep going. I think, I think we're close, Ryan. I, I don't know. You're doing a good job. I was, I was really dialed in. A lot of times the things that come out on Sunday get buried in the midst of the game and That's all the true. other things. Um, but and then when these guys put out these articles that are so unbelievable. Okay, I just it literally ha- looks I, I like Zach is scrolling through the. Dictionary. I know, I know. Come on, Albert Brew. Let's make it a little easier on us. You need a um, command F on the iPhone. Ah, uh, I know. Seriously, but I pr- I have a uh, um the gist of it right here. Okay. So Albert Albert Breer used the <coughs> word the survival of George Payton uh, as the general manager of the Denver Broncos, and here's just a little clip of what he said. Since I can't find the full thing in that dictionary, he said, "If the owners need to bring in a certain GM to attract a coach." That's where things could get a little sketchy for Chris Ballard, the GM of the Colts, and George Payton, obviously the general manager of the Broncos. And uh, when he was saying this, he was kind of referring to if the Broncos or Colts or another team, but he was really focused on these two, if they go big and get a Sean Payton or a Jim Harbaugh, then that could put the future of either of these GMs, and we're focusing on, obviously, George today, in jeopardy. That's big news. Yes. We're talking about the general manager. Yeah. This, and it is awkward, and I can't remember who it was, so sorry to this person, but someone tweeted at us last week, and was like, I think you guys are making a little bit too much of the GM being part of the coaching search and then getting fired because 
the coach wants a different GM or whatever. Um, and they pointed to a few different scenarios in which this has happened. One being um, San Francisco. Kyle Shanahan mm -hmm. was hired, and then they brought in John Lynch to kind of be his caddy. Right, right, um, right. And so it's not completely and, and utterly uh, uh, unprecedented for something like this to happen. But it is odd that someone out there is telling someone yeah. out there <laughs> yeah. that, yeah, George is the GM for now. And that makes sense, I guess, in, in a way. And, and there's so many different layers to this. But the first one is George Payton last week just, just admitting how, how all of this is on him. And we know that Greg Penner, because he said it, is impatient and did not like the way this season went. And then right after that, George Payton says, yeah, it's on me right here. The, um, the guy right next to you, Greg. I, I did it all. Uh, I, I put us in this situation. And then jo Greg, to be fair, did then give his support to, to George Payton. But Which is worth nothing. Right. It, it's those <laughs> votes of confidence yeah. that is just for that moment. Yep. Uh, and so it, it, do it doesn't shock me when I read this. And, and it's also something we've talked about. Mm -hmm. and again, I mean, that's why I see this a lot like the, the, the report that said the Broncos owners are going to do anything that it takes or whatever to turn things around. It's like, well, yeah, we kind of we knew that. We kind of knew that they're willing to blow a bunch of money to bring in the coach that they want. And I feel like we kind of knew that there's a way that this plays out where George Payton isn't involved. Um, and it, it's definitely notable that it comes out because somebody's saying that. Um, but it, it's very similar to me as that other report where it's like, okay, what we all suspected is absolutely true. Yeah. By the way, in the real world, if you tell someone your job is completely 100% safe and then fire them like a week later, that is a lawsuit waiting to happen. <laughs> that is. It's so <laughs> yeah. true. <laughs> but I guess the lawsuit part of this is like, okay, George, here's the rest of your contract. That is true. Like we're we're yeah, just gonna we're just gonna pay the lawsuit up front essentially. <laughs> yeah, <Yep. exactly. laughs> um, yeah, this is this is a weird one. George Payton has to feel really awkward. Yep, and and, and and I don't think that this would play a role, but it does kind of create a conflict of interest, does it not? Ah, uh, I think it certainly does. Like George Payton has a vested not? interest in the Broncos not hiring a top candidate. He does, yes. yes. He he would love a Frank Reich or, uh, or a Dan, I mean, Quinn. Dan Quinn. Come on, that, that's yep. his guy. That would be perfect. Or a Jerry Rosberg, potentially. Mm. I think Jerry would need a strong <laughs> GM in place, wouldn't he? Yes. Uh, and so I certainly think this is interesting. And what's going to be very interesting to find out over the next few days or really in the next week probably is just how involved George Payton <clears throat> actually is. Because we know that ownership is going to have George, get George Payton's advice. We don't exactly know. Is George Payton going to be in the room for every interview? And if he's not, oh my goodness. You got to be just absolutely sweating. I almost feel like you can't have him in the room. Because you want to ask yes. what their coach's plans are exactly. in order mm -hmm. to do personnel. Yes. How do you feel about George Payton? What would your plan be at GM if not him? Yeah. I, I don't think he can be in the room, not to mention the fact that he has a he wouldn't do this, but he has an interest in sabotaging the interviews. <laughs> Could you imagine? He just comes out with all the hard hitters for uh, for Sean and Jim and then just easy. Soft He's like, balls. all right, Peyton, so listen, <laughs> I see the winning percentage, but what did you do without a Hall of Fame quarterback? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I guess then Sean Payton could be like, I went 4-0 with Teddy Bridgewater. Oh, that's, that's true. actually true. Yes, <laughs> that's, that's true. true. He's like, uh, I won games with Taysom Hill at quarterback. But isn't isn't George Payton a Teddy guy since he brought him in? So he could be like, nope, I know how good Teddy is. That one doesn't count. What about the Taysom one? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be, did he actually win games with Taysom? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, As he beat the starter. Denver Broncos at least once. Beat well, the Broncos. okay, touche. That last season yep. was rough. It though. was a tough matchup for the Broncos with um, Taysom Hill <laughs> starting against Philip Lindsay. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. So it, it, every time that Sean brings up another guy, George just has a counter. He's like, no, that one doesn't count. That was, uh, that was the Philip Lindsay game. Otherwise, no, it's a Kendall Hinton game. Yeah, I, and again, obviously, George Payton's a professional. He yes, wouldn't do yeah. anything like that. I also think George Payton is a smart man, yeah. and I think that his resume has seen many desks this week. Um, 
because wait, say that again. His resume has seen many desks. This oh, week, okay, yeah. Huh? It's anyone who needs a GM. Yeah. George Payton's resume is coming across the desk mm. because he just has to know what's happening here, mm -hmm. and he's under contract, so he can't like quit right. to try to go, or else you know then he's not going to get his money for getting fired. Yep. Um, but. Essentially, it feels like the Broncos are saying, okay, well, he's kind of in charge of the draft, so let's let him steady the ship into yeah. the draft, and then we'll figure it out after that. And you kind of need somebody just to handle things for the end of the season. And you could yep. probably have somebody step up, but, I mean, this is the time of year where you're pulling five guys up every week from the practice <laughs> squad and cutting five guys and figuring out who fits where and deciding whether you're bringing in I think even the that running back from Missouri, Tyler Beatty, who they signed, who I think on the draft pod we liked quite a bit. You know, when it comes time to figure out which practice squad guys do you bring in from other practice squads for the last two, three weeks of the season, you want to have that draft knowledge to be like, oh, we kind of liked him coming out, you know, hasn't touched a football. And so I do think that there's value in keeping him through the season, even if Hackett's gone. And on top of that, you are what? eight months into your draft prep right now for mm -hmm. this coming draft, it would be really mm -hmm. tough to fire him, bring in a new head coach, have him hire a general manager, get a staff together, and do all of that in two and a half, three months before the draft. That's <coughs> how you really get in trouble. And I believe that's actually one of the things that Josh McDaniels did when he came here, was he did kind of start new when he got here, and then it was just an absolute mm -hmm. mess. That's the draft when the Broncos traded a first-round pick for a second-round pick, uh, or a second-round pick for a first-round pick, and then they drafted a corner who then was on the team for two years. Yeah. It, mm -hmm. I mean, it was an absolute mess. I don't think Sean Payton or Jim Harbaugh would be in that much of a mess, but that's still a tough position. So I think the shot that, uh, that George Payton is good for the next few months, but he signed, was it a six-year deal? I mean, he's worried a big way one. more yeah. about the next few months. Yeah, and I don't even know if he actually survives to the draft. Oh. Um, because what you could do is Sean Payton has his guy, and he just says, like, this is who I want to be the GM. You hire the guy. You keep everyone else in place. That's true. And you essentially say, okay, we have all the scouting. We have all the information. Yeah. We have all this stuff. We just don't have George Payton, who is essentially going to make the decisions at the end of it. Mm -hmm. But we have all the same information. We actually want our new guy to be the one who has those final say, say and makes that final decision. And yeah. if that's the route they're going to go, where they're going to move on from George Payton at some point this year, <clears throat> please do what you just said, Ryan, because it never makes sense to me to have a guy make the picks and then you fire him right after. It's yeah. like, whoa, no, like we don't. We don't know how these picks are yet. So you knew you were going to do this going into the draft. So and also Jim or Sean Payton has already talked to Vic Fangio about being his defensive coordinator. You mm -hmm. think Sean Payton and Jim Harbaugh have already thought about who they want as their general manager and maybe said, Why don't you start prepping for the draft this year? I'm sure those conversations have happened. That's the tough part though, is there's really nobody who jumps out for, mm. for guys who they would like to have in those roles. Like Jim Harbaugh, obviously, the reason he left San Francisco is because he was it Jed York at the time. That I think it right, was. So. Yep. I think it was. They just hated each other. Yeah, and and so that didn't work out. And I so think a lot of people hated Jed York. I think a lot of people hated right. Jim Harbaugh. I think I think you're that's right. why that organization <laughs> was a mess there for a second. But yeah, so so then remember that guy that they didn't they hire that guy who's like the linebackers coach or something, <clears throat> Jim Tom Sula. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is yeah. that who followed Jim Harbaugh? Yeah. I think so. And then Chip Kelly after that for a year, too. For a year. And then for Shanahan. One year? Yeah. Yeah, it was a disaster. Won two games. Remember when... Yeah. I, I, you probably remember when Chip Kelly just straight up lied to me on the... Uh, uh, when they were doing... Um, what's it called? Joint practices? No, wait. Remind me. <laughs> the, uh, the 49ers had this kid on their team, Jarrett Bell. Jarrett Bell. Mm, he was a yeah. buff. <clears throat> one of the nicest people I've ever covered in my life. Um, so I was going to do a, like a little fun story on him. And I went to the media availability. I guess he didn't lie. He was just completely wrong. Um, and I was like, hey, like, what do you remember from coaching against Jared Bell, Jared Bell in the Pac-12? <laughs> and he was just like, oh, he wasn't in the Pac-12 when I was there. Like, like essentially, like, 
responding to me like I was an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Talk down. To yeah, you. he was oh, like, man. I haven't been in the Pac-12 in this many years. Uh, he wasn't there when I was there, and I was like, well. He, he was there for six years. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say that? No, I was just yeah, like... Yeah, you're just like, okay, well, <laughs> Chip right. doesn't know his stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly, because he didn't scout this guy. <laughs> Dang. Mm -hmm. Uh, he totally ruined that story. Yeah, he did. He did. Uh, anyways. Or at least a fun part of that That was story. a one-year situation. That's crazy. One wow. year. It was that bad because things were kind of falling off the rails in Philadelphia when he left, and then it just took off from there when he got mm -hmm. to San Francisco. Man, they got it right after mm -hmm. that. But then on the Saints side, <clears throat> Sean Payton, it's been, it was Mickey Loomis the entire time he was there. So, so he only had the one GM, and who knows, maybe Mickey Loomis leaves the Saints after being their GM for 20 years. And I think he might still be the Pelicans GM too. I might be wrong about that. Double, but dipping? he was both. Yeah, he, I don't think he still Wait, is. Wait, what? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he was GM of both teams. A basketball team. You're gonna have and to Google that one. But okay, we can Google team? that one. But but <laughs> yeah, it's that's the tough part though. Is there isn't like somebody who's just sitting out on the sideline where you're like, oh. They worked together before. I bet that's who you want. Yeah, I forget the name of the guy, but he was in the Broncos GM search, huh. um, and he was with the Saints. Um, and he, it was like I think he was one of the final two candidates. Right. Now he's yeah, in Atlanta, yeah, yeah. so he's off the board. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's the guy who you photo bombed at the Senior Bowl last yep. year. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I really don't know um, what the situation is, yeah. but I know they have someone. Again, like if, but that's. Uh, they they must they must have someone who's in that side of things, but it's just so hard to find anybody right now. And on top of that, I mean George Payton, as we've heard over and over and over again, very well respected within the NFL. So I think those guys, there's a decent chance that, and this is something I brought up a couple of weeks ago, or somebody did. It it almost is a pretty good fit to kind of give George Payton that demotion of being you're the general manager, but you're both basically just you know head scout. You're the one who pulls the trigger. You're you're discussing things with the the coach, but they decide, and, and they probably have somebody else, somebody who they want to give the job to. But I, I'm not willing to overlook the chance that they say, yeah, this is this is a good guy for that role. Well, I think that that's a very fair point, and you guys will never believe it, but I found the excerpt in the article, oh, and, and I think it twenty may, minutes late. <laughs> It may play something into what Henry's saying or play against it. And let's talk about that. But first, I got to tell you about our friends over at DraftKings Sportsbook. We use the promo code DNVR when you sign up to get the opportunity to win $150 free. How do you do that? Place a $5 money line bet on any NFL team to win. And if they do, you get to cash out. Every team is playing this weekend, so there's so many games to choose from. Probably fairly easy to pick at least one winner in there, and that'll turn into $150 in free bets by using the promo code DNVR on the TV behind us. We've got Lions and Packers. Who do you guys have this week? If you're placing a $5 money line bet. Packers. It is absolutely the Packers. And again, it is so dumb that they have a chance to get into the playoffs. It is dumb. They should have blown that. But I mean, they're... They'll finish with a winning record if they win this. Oh, totally. But again, it should be the Bucks can get in at eight and nine. But yeah. it should be a sixteen game season so that you can't screw up the first part of the season like that and still have a chance to do this. Wow. So you're Henry, just... this is what we were Oh, it came off the screen. I Never missed. mind. It was Pat Mac. What what were you? <laughs> they just had the headroom all messed up. See, like it looks like uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> looks this tiny. is what we were trying to avoid on the tailgate <laughs> the other day. <laughs> yeah. No, we had already done that though. Me and Dre had His already hand looks lined huge. up our. Did you see Roger's hand? <laughs> he probably oh, has it looked huge massive. Hands. But it's because like he's sitting so far back, but his hand was so much closer to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Dre Dre got there first, and so he was up there at the top, and I was below him. And so then he was like, "You should pull your head up to match him." And then you came in, and yeah, then you said, "You two need to come down because you wanted your painting in the background." No, it was it, there was a lot more to oh, it. Okay, that. it's understandable if it was for the painting, though. Yeah. I get it. It wasn't. Uh, it, had it was for the painting. The painting. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Anyways. Anyways, use the promo the code DNVR to sign up. Those guys are taking the Packers. Give me the Lions and an upset here. I mean, um, I want, pull, that's what I want. For. Yeah, exactly. That's why I'll be pulling for them. Uh, and see our show notes for details. Use the promo code DNVR over at DraftKings Sportsbook. <sighs> Started four and eight. This is garbage. <laughs> While you're watching Anyone this game that shouldn't matter. NFC. That's uh, true. Yeah. Then drink some Breckenridge beers. You're going to need it to watch all these losers. Although, if the Packers beat the Bills in the Super Bowl, I make a lot of money. So I guess I am a Packer fan. Mm. I am grateful for all of this, it, it turns out. Um, so many good beers. 
including a new beer that's on the way soon. And I'm not sure how hard we tease that. So uh, new beer on the way soon. Mm, nice very, nice very local cool. flavor to it. Yep. Mm. Ah, local uh, no, look? Local look, yes. We mm. can't say local flavor to it because what? that's like... Well, because beers have flavor. They have taste. So yeah. you're thinking like, oh, uh, it might right. be like... It's more just like it's themed than it is like an actual Oh, I thought flavor. you meant like it tastes like Denver. Like what, what would green that flavor chili be? Beer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ick. Okay, no, outside just, of green chili, what would the flavor be? Just amazing. Ah. All, <laughs> all facets. Mm, that's a good point. <laughs> well, so you, you sometimes like drink a beer and just say like, oh, that tastes like Denver. It's incredible. <laughs> if it was the best thing I've ever tasted, I would probably think that, yeah. Like, just wow, eating. what a sandwich. Reminds yeah. me of Denver. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the types of things that go through my mind. Uh, I'm like, this has to be from Denver. It's perfect. So if it's even better than, than Denver, would would you call it a boulder? or Better than Denver? Wow, Bol- Denver's better than Boulder, huh? Yeah, people always get surprised by that. I'm a, I'm a Denver wow, over Boulder guy. Wow, you're one of us. Mm-hmm. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah, it's it's pretty actually not even that close to me. Wow. I love Boulder. Like it's a yeah, very yeah. very obvious number two, but yeah, a, yeah. it has its flaws. Just like it does. It has like, some serious flaws. Just like Ali and uh, Jokic. Ali and Jokic. You, you know, yes. well, wow. one one is just above the other. But yep. wait, so does that mean Boulder should be in front of Denver? No, because. No. Jokic should be. In front oh, of that that's here you oh. go. <laughs> there we go again. Just gonna start another fight. Um, but yeah, there's so many beers that are from Denver and taste like they're from ben- Denver from Brackenridge Brewery. Go to Brackenridge.com. You can use their beer locator. It'll tell you exactly where to go to pick up whatever beer you want to try. They're in 30 states, so there's probably something near you. All right, here is the excerpt. The long-awaited from excerpt Albert. that we pretty <laughs> much already talked. About. This is like seventy. This is like eighty-two percent down in the article, and I thought I was going to easily find it, but I, I didn't. Screenshot but, it. So there, I should have. I should. That would have been smart. Um, so there's three bullet points, and they all mention the word Denver. Denver, mm, great, great place in it. So let let me just. Uh, Let me read these right now. One thing I hear about Denver, experience, experience, experience. I don't think they'll roll the dice with a first-timer, and it's willing to spend to ensure that. So guys such as Sean Payton, Jim Harbaugh, Frank Wright, and Dan Quinn should be in the mix if they want to be. They want to be. Harbaugh, next point. Harbaugh stated his desires to, to, to stay at Michigan. Still, Harbaugh said himself he has unfinished business in the NFL, and his name is hot with NFL teams as it's been probably in a half, or it's hotter than it's been in a half decade. Over the past few weeks, I've heard his name connected to Denver and Indianapolis, so it looks like the ball will be in his court. So he just mentioned Denver and Indianapolis, and here's what it gets to the GM part. The survival of GMs in Indy and Denver, and it's likely both Chris Ballard and George Payton make it, I will tie to the coach search which is to say if the owners need to bring in a certain GM to attract a coach, Mm -hmm. hiring Jeff Ireland for Ryan Pace to land Peyton, that's where things could get a little sketchy for Ballard and Peyton. Interesting. There you go. I need some more information on Jeff Ireland. Yes. Uh, Can you guess where he's from? Ireland. I'm going to guess Boston. Ah, Uh. Both good guesses. Jeff, I ah uh, wow, he looks like he is straight from Ireland. <laughs> he, called um, it. he is uh, born in Abilene, Texas. Wow, wow. Oh, of course, football. It all goes back to Texas. <laughs> That's very true. Also, Mickey Loomis, he was the executive vice president. At, yeah, no, executive vice president of basketball operations for eight years. But he hired the GM. He was not the GM. Okay. But still, like, that's the basketball operations yeah. side of things. But again, like, if Greg Penner <laughs> bought the Nuggets as well, and then he was like, you're the executive vice president, we'll get, have you GM here, assistant. we'll basically double your pay, you help hire this guy for it. You know, it <clears throat> kind of makes sense. Jeff Ireland, assistant GM and college scouting director for the Saints starting in 2015. That'd make a lot of sense. It yeah. would. There's a big connection there, and he's still doing that, but he's the assistant GM, so he could be hired away. Uh, He's listed as a scout for the NFL scouting combine as one of his positions. (laughs) So he's like the person who chooses who gets invited. So he's the guy that passed up on Philip Lindsay. Oh, in 1994. Yeah, yeah, when he knew (coughs) Philip Lindsay was born then and said, we can't let this guy. Also special teams coach at North Texas, 1992. Ryan Pace is 6'3", 250. Yeah. I didn't realize he was so big. Big boy. That is a big man. <laughs> that really is. <coughs> I might hire him. Um. So, anyways, that was the clip that we waited. For. So, but something something off of there is uh, 
what I think is interesting is he says if they need to do this to attract a coach, which to me says what you were pointing at, Ryan, is they don't wait till the draft to make this move. No. Um, When they hire Sean Payton, Jim Harbaugh, it comes with that GM right away. And you're hiring that person to be the GM. He would have that title. So you would have to move on from George Payton. Also, again, George Payton knows what's happening. Wouldn't it just be weird to have him making those selections? Right, right. Yeah, it would be. Like, obviously, he's yeah. still try- you would assume he's still trying to make the best picks. Yeah, definitely. But you also would have assumed John Fox was trying to, you know, give the Broncos the best chance to right. beat the Colts. And I think at this point, if he makes it to the draft, he's making it through the draft. I, I not, not like it's a definite, but I do think, like, if, the, if they need to bring in a GM to get whoever, obviously that happens in the next few weeks. If not, I think he's kind of the GM going forward until there's... I, th- I think he's like towing the line of being fired, but hasn't hit it yet. And I just have to say, I don't like uh, this much change. It's a lot it's, within the past right. six months. I mean, and six years. When you yeah. hired George Payton, it was like, okay, it looks like there's going to be a new direction, new stability. Yeah. He yeah. brings in his support staff around him. Some scouts that have been here for a long time get fired for new scouts. Uh, and, you know, like, okay, this is the direction. And then two years later, you're redoing the whole thing again. It's just like, yeah. sure, maybe this is the time you get it right and it's actual stability. But there's just no, like essentially in two years, you're overturning the entire organization. Yeah. Again. It's very Again. True. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> so it's it's not ideal, to be honest. And then just talk about more uncertainty moving forward. These guys, if they do move on from George Payton, none of the players on the roster will be from this new staff, including Russell Wilson. And then so you just have to imagine there's going to be a roster overhaul, yep. especially if things don't work out this coming year for the Broncos. And then it's quarterback uncertainty. And then so you're just talking about more and more. However, how bad of an idea is that? This is a 4-12 and yeah. 12 team, 4 mm-hmm. and. 12 four team and right now. Yeah. Four, wow. Okay. Giving your pick away a day early, <laughs> I see. Uh, four and 12, four and 13 team going forward. And that's just why, oh, man, the stability of hiring Sean Payton or Jim Harbaugh is also such an attractive thing that, that I don't think we've talked about enough, but is just so important. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I hate to say this, I'll touch Touchwood before I even do it, but. It feels like if you hire a Sean Payton or a Jim Harbaugh, like you're not firing them in two years. It, right, right. <laughs> it feels I'm happy like you okay. touch wood because yeah. I feel like Denver needs mm-hmm. that. Yeah, I mean, uh, like I said, it feels like. Yeah. But those just aren't guys who you're like, well, didn't work. Let's try something new. Right. You know, like mm-hmm. those are guys that even if things go a little bit awry, you're still like, okay, well, we put our trust as an organization in yeah. this all time winning mm-hmm. head coach. Yep. Mm hmm. So that does feel like you're finally getting some sort of stability, but it's like, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's odd to do this much turnover so fast. I will say one last thing that's just on my mind. Mm-hmm. If you were to, it was Harbaugh, wait, it was Harbaugh or Peyton that wants uh, Fangio. Peyton, Peyton, Peyton wants Fangio. Yep. Harbaugh mm-hmm. also had Fangio on his staff. So he yep. might want him as well. Yep. Um, if everyone's gone, yeah, that was there true. when Vic Fangio got fired. So Maybe he does come back to Denver. The only thing is, I'm sure he didn't miss the reports from like players talking shit uh, on him. Yeah. So they're not all gone. <laughs> I don't uh, think he'd come back if Peyton comes. Why I not? don't think just, so. Just the th- he was just the head coach. Wait, so who who Vic wouldn't want to come back, or you think Sean Wait, wouldn't Bron- want to bring him back? You think the Broncos wouldn't? It wouldn't be Sean. It would be, I don't think the Broncos really would want him back. I don't think he would want to step into that situation. I guess the, that would probably be what decides Would the Broncos it. have to send him two paychecks every month? No, because the offsets. But you can't <laughs> offset your own salary. Man, that would be something. I mean, you still probably just give him that one check. Well, that's Could you consolidate? the point. Oh. Let's, <laughs> if, Save paper. If that's the case and Sean Payton still wants Vic... You know what solves all of this? Money. Cut everybody yeah. on the money. defense. Yeah, or that. Yeah, yeah. no. <laughs> uh, money would solve it. You say, Vic, it's a weird situation. George Payton, 
George Payton would no longer would have to not be here because George Payton literally fired Vic Fangio yeah. a year ago. So that's a move that would have to be made. So we moved on from the guy that fired you. We're a new ownership group. Uh, this is your new head coach, and we're going to give you more than you made as a head coach to be our defensive Five coordinator. Five million. I, just, <laughs> yeah. uh, I want the Broncos to spend so like rough. $100 million I mean, on their coaches. <laughs> <That's> what, <laughs> Why not? Vic Fangio probably will get like four or five million dollars. Five million dollars, I'd guess, whether it's the Broncos <laughs> or somewhere else. Like that, if, if he really is the best defensive coordinator, if that's how the NFL sees him, like that's what he gets paid. I feel like, I mean, fans, even when people really didn't like Vic, mm-hmm. we still had those fans coming in last year saying, okay, hear me out. What if the Broncos yeah. demote Vic, the yeah. defensive coordinator? Yeah, we yeah. don't like him as a head coach, but we love him as defensive coordinator. I, I feel like the things players said would probably fit in that as well. Like, oh, you know, you think Nathaniel so. Hackett's more fun now. Yeah, I think they all respected him as a huh. as a coordinator. See, and that's why I just, you, you would know more than me. But to me, it just seems like a bad idea to put Vic Fangio in that defensive room every single day because it just piss all the players off. Like, they would be miserable, I, was, was my in feeling about it. How, eh. how many Coordinators do you think they don't get really, over like, wear on people in that way at least ruin lives but they already yeah. have worn on them is the thing i know so like but what when i'm they... saying is like they, i don't think they have enough power to like, like my my thing is more like day one he walks in everybody's like you're kidding like we really have to do this i'm pissed and then i just i think they just hate him for that reason and they're just miserable because of it i don't think it just seems like a bad a idea. Sizzle reel of all the things people said about him. <laughs> He's like Justin. So you said uh, this. What's up with that? <laughs> that would be incredible or terrible. Um, but I mean, how many players really will there be? I mean, Justin, Justin, Pat, Josie, a lot. Chubb's gone. Baron Browning, like Jonathan Cooper, have been around. I just, I don't think those guys hated him I as. Don't I don't even as a as like a defensive coordinator as a defensive. I man. also think a lot of guys would be sent packing. It's probably good and just that talks about true. the the turnover of the roster. Yep. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, yeah, you do need the turnover of the roster. At the same time, though, like much bigger than free agency or the draft or any of that this year is just getting guys back from IR. Like that basically is your off season. Is here's eighteen guys, and sure, some of them are Chris Allen, who's just like undrafted rookie pass rusher what does he give but but your free agency really is just here's 17 18 guys coming right back plus we'll throw a tackle in there who's probably one of your three best players come back if you include those and one or two other pieces to patch things i i don't know so Uh, so there's just so much talent coming back so henry there's no right or wrong but let's say you are greg penner yep and uh, sean payton's your number one guy or jim harbaugh since, since jim's your number one guy and that number one guy says, I have to have Vic on my coaching staff. You view it the way you do of mm-hmm. like, man, that could be really weird. Yep. Are you doing it? Or are you saying, I'm going I mean, on to the other guy? I would try to talk him out of it. I would say... He says Look. no, because the Panthers are giving me Vic if I want him. But but again, like if he wants Vic at the end of the day, you, you don't have a choice. Okay. Like he has you by the balls. That's just how it is. <laughs> but But you say, look, these guys all hate Vic. I know you like Vic. These guys really did not like Vic. They wanted him to go. It just he was just the head coach here. It's a weird power dynamic. You understand that. Like is there anybody else who you want or do you think that that really is the best way to to go win football games? If you still think that's the best way, then you go right ahead and do it, but understand the situation. He's like, "Did you see Sam Mills?" <laughs> who the hell is Sam Mills? It's Vic Fangio's favorite person in the world. <laughs> so he was an undersized linebacker who w- made it to the Hall of Fame under Vic Fangio's tutelage, oh and Vic brings up, I don't know, yeah. at least once a week. Yeah, oh, it, it, okay. I, I'm maybe exaggerating a little bit, but you know when uh, Bronco gets elected into the Hall of Fame and there's always a question <laughs> to the head coach, like, so Steve Atwater being elected into the Hall of Fame, how cool is that? And Vic would be like, Oh man, so cool! But my guy Sam Mills—it's <laughs> no. it's like, it's like oh, it just no. reminds me of a story, <laughs> <Right>. Sam Mills. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> um, boy, I mean, just you—you you said the word, the words power dynamic, yeah. and just how interesting it's going to be over the next few weeks <clears throat> with Greg yeah. Penner, George Payton, the ownership group looking for guys then. Finding guys who want a lot of power, who want to bring in their own general manager and maybe their own defensive uh-huh. coordinator. It's 
It's going to be so fascinating to see this play out. If I'm being honest, it feels dysfunctional to me. It's fair. I understand. So uh, I hope they get it straightened out and figured out. But right now, it just feels like there's a lot of people in positions that are learning on the job and they're obviously spending a lot of money on this so they want to you know do certain things but it just feels like you've got a gm who's a dead man walking you've got an ownership group who doesn't really have business doing it but they're going to lead the coaching search it's just like "Eh, this feels bad and hopefully they get it right you're so right and that's why Boy, those two guys, Jim Harbaugh and Sean Payton, are just at the top because if you hire one of them, yeah. it just feels like, okay, we can have some stability. They're in charge of everything now. There's no question about it. And then it also, I think, takes a lot of concern, at least off my mind, about Greg Penner exactly. uh, did yep. taking too much power because I think if he hires one of these guys, then Greg Penner's done his job on the football side and he takes a step back. Exactly. And that's what, like... If these owners are deciding between Shane Steichen and Ben Johnson, I don't know that I love that. If they're deciding between Sean Payton and Jim Harbaugh, <laughs> go right ahead. Like yeah. your job is just to, to convince them to come here. Our, do it. Our friends in PHNX are having the exact same conversation: Jim Harbaugh or Sean Payton. I feel like we should just flip a coin. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Whatever it lands, each side gets their guy, and we move wow. on. Wow. Uh, I like that. And you know, I've already uh, talked to uh, talked to the PHNX guys, and we're gonna we're gonna have them on the show uh, huh. to maybe debate what's the better spot. Ooh, wow. I like this. W- can we just pull clips of them talking about how bad they're? <laughs> That's what we right. do. We'll That's just what we we'll just do. replay what Johnny <laughs> said last time. We're like, yeah. here's our <laughs> argument. Play. <laughs> uh, uh, and we said ours is bad, but ours is not yeah. that bad. And yeah. I. I wouldn't be surprised if George Payton <clears throat> kind of laughs through this last game and might be gone next week. Okay, so like, let's... I think ooh. that would kind of line up. Because, again, that's when these moves typically happen. Yeah. Like, it's it's after the season. And uh, on top of that, we know that the Broncos didn't want to fire Nathaniel exactly. Hackett in the middle of the season. Exactly. And so I do think that's kind of the next big hurdle that could kind of throw some clarity in here. So let's let's put a stamp on it. Mm-hmm. Six months from now. Yeah. Right. Is George Payton the Denver Broncos GM, Zach? No. Henry? I will say no, but I would also say he's the favorite. Like, if the, if, if I have to say, like, is it right. Ryan Pace? Is it whoever? I say, like, it, George Payton most likely. Again, I'd still take the field versus him. So you're giving him a less than 50% chance one to be three. the GM, but he's got a higher chance than anyone else. Yep. As, as far as individuals go, he's number one. That's still, like, a one in three chance. Look at that hedging there. Yeah, I'm saying no as well. Which is pretty crazy. Yeah. This yeah. Is, and that's why I thought it was so wild that that, that report didn't blow up yeah. Broncos Twitter. Because I was just like, that's I good point. think they just said George Payton's not the GM anymore. Yeah, it's a, it's a really good point. And uh, that's why I think that the Broncos have a better than 50% chance of landing Sean, Sean Payton or Jim Harbaugh. And then that's the move that comes after that. But man, it would be fascinating if on Monday, before they even start the coaching search, what Henry said, that George mm-hmm. is gone. Yeah. But again, it would just make everything way more clear. Because again, we talked about like, oh, they're going to have George Payton in there. That seems odd considering right. his job is up for grabs. It's like, oh, they haven't started interviewing coaches yet. Oh, that seems odd considering they could. All of a sudden, if, if they're just firing George Payton on Monday, and then you look at both those things and say, like, oh, yeah, never mind. That's what was up. Yeah, they that, want him to run the last few weeks of the season. Man, and and he is making those moves. A lot that, of them that 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 you want a GM to do at the end of a season mm-hmm. when your team is four and thirteen. So funny thing happened last night. Uh, our friend Adam Hogue over at CHGO mm-hmm. posted a kind of funny tweet about how you know lots of people copy the things that we do here <laughs> at All City. Um, and someone responded to him and said, "I live in Chicago and I have no clue what All City is, but I listen to a weekly podcast from at DNVR Rugby." <laughs> oh, what? It was such a random wow. callback, but great uh, tip of the cap to what our friend Colton Strickler is doing wow. over at DNVR Rugby, covering the American Raptors and really all things USA Rugby, uh, and just random people in Chicago <laughs> coming across the DNVR Rugby podcast. Someone else responded to him was like. Wow, I love rugby. I got to check this podcast out. So, wow. yep. huge night. Yeah. DNVR Rugby Podcast to the Moon. Wow, that is impressive. I mean, Rugby Town USA, baby. Rugby Town USA, just another great tip of the cap to things kind of in Denver. Yeah, Glendale. <laughs> 
It's it's yeah. literally exists <laughs> wow. inside it of does. Denver. It does. It really is Denver, essentially. Yeah, it's in Denver. Just more debauchery can happen there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. it's, so it's, true. It's, it's interesting. That's exactly. You it. can you drive on the street and you know exactly which side's Denver and which side's Glendale. It's really true. <laughs> Honestly, if you ever just like are bored one day and you yeah. want to read something, just Google like fun facts about Glendale, Colorado. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> really, you can do a lot there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, huh. And and you can see a lot of things over a game time. Uh, maybe different things than you'd see in Glendale, yeah. but you can catch a lot of... Rugby. G- yeah, exactly. Yeah, yes. There you go. You can catch a lot of games over at game time, and check out the link in our description. Click on it. It'll take you right to the final Broncos game. I got to imagine this is going to be one to get in a fairly good price, really good price, I would think. And as Ryan said yesterday... You hope it's the last time that you're able to get, go to a Broncos game for a very affordable price. So click on the link in our description on YouTube. Check out the link in our description under the podcast side of things as well. It'll take you right to the Broncos games. And then also you can just check out the Nuggets and Avs games from there. There's some great tickets, especially for Nuggets games. And that's the place mm-hmm. to find Avs tickets if you want to go as well. So click on the description and check out our friends over at Game Time. Speaking of the Nuggets, just wanted to say nice new hat, Henry. I like it. Got for Christmas. Definitely uh, worth wearing two days yeah. in a row. Lexi. I know. I <laughs> Yeah. No, I'm being serious. No, it, it's a good one. It's I a mean, good it's one. it's got the it's cursive nuggets, and then on the side, you get the old school logo. Yeah, like yeah, that's cream nice. cream yep. color. Yep. Very yep. classy. It's, it's officially yep. cream. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is officially cream. I like wearing it. Lexi likes when I wear it. Oh, it's that's like a, a win It's a great yeah. combination. Yeah. And you still got the sticker to just prove that it's legit underneath. I do. I appreciate that. There we go. I did take off a lot of stickers, though. Why do hats come with so many stickers? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't that question. kind of crazy? The huge one on the bill. Yeah, remember when people used to leave those on? Yeah. Oh yeah. P- I, I think people that. are still doing it. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, take that. Take the stickers off your hats. <laughs> As you have one on your hat right now. Well, that one's shiny. Okay. That <clears throat> it's kind of fun. Good. Kinda Maybe just... it was back in the fitted hat day, and it was like a flex to have a bigger yeah. head. So you're like, because uh, it means you're, you have you know oh, bigger brain. You want to show it off. <laughs> it's how like in the 70s, all t-shirts said like XXXL. <laughs> <laughs> it's like right. property of the Denver Broncos. <laughs> yeah, that was a weird phase. That is Isn't weird. that weird? Yeah. Weirder or less weird than sticker hats? Um, I don't know, but pro- I would say more weird. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, probably more weird than both of those things. My gym, uh, gym teacher in middle school was a former linebacker for the chiefs and oh, was like wow. just like the ultimate hardo i bet and he made us wear those like shirts those like gym shirts so, like, <laughs> yeah. property of nevin platt <laughs> middle school we've lived in such different worlds like they're in high school my sophomore year i think maybe it was my freshman year everybody was excited because we had this new football coach who uh he was a walk-on lineman at idaho like big sky school, like walk on. Everybody's like, "Oh my god, we're gonna be incredible!" And then they went and won like the state championship because that wow. guy. Or no, I think they finished second. They lost the championship game because that guy. Meanwhile, you just have like former NFL linebackers in school. Really quick, did you guys have gym, um, like uniforms for in, in middle school? Yeah, for seventh yes. and eighth grade, I did. Okay. Yep. Worst idea ever. It is. Yeah. Because ours, you would lose credit in class if you didn't wear your uniform. So this means that you would just leave your uniform in your locker always. Yeah. Yeah. You know what that means? (laughs) (laughs) Never (laughs) once took it home to get washed because if you took it home to get washed, then there's the chance you forget to bring it back on Monday (laughs) and then you lose credit. (laughs) And you're sweating in it. Yeah. You sweat in it every day. (laughs) That's the point of it. (laughs) terribly terribly unsanitary yeah. decision by the school what they need is like an equipment guy who washes all the kids uniforms for great them. idea yeah in public schools i don't think that's yeah, happening i don't yeah, think so no, no. there's gotta be somebody make makes mr linebacker do it or whatever oh uh, yes mr. What was, mr montoya no offense to gym teachers but like that is not a very hard job and again it's more of like props to you yeah. for getting that job yeah, I mean, you deal with children it'd like be, it's a nightmare, but it's a you gotta stop. It'd be, it's yeah. a nightmare for five hours it'd be an a day. Awesome when you have the job. Five I would say walk kidding? a mile into their shoes before you. It, it would be a great sports job and and teach sports and gym all day. If anything, I'm it'd saying awesome. you guys are geniuses for taking that job. Again, some of it terrible. Like when the little kid punches little kid B. Like sure, yeah, one shitty. T- one time in my gym class, I told my friend I would never say uncle no matter what. And he got me in a headlock and was like, say uncle. And I was like, no, no. Yeah. And he was just choking, <laughs> yeah. me, choking me until I passed out. I didn't say uncle. Yeah. 
in gym class yeah and so then like you know the gym teacher had to deal with me being passed yeah. out my friend just <laughs> oh choked my me out God. but then when the bell rings at 1 32 in the afternoon it's like oh my 40 minutes with these little assholes is done bring in the new ones to see if they're having a good day yeah i would say <laughs> any job that has to deal with like 13 year old boys is mm. a terrible job uh, not like a i just it's not easy especially that's for sure. sweaty boys yeah 13 year old sweaty boys <laughs> and ryan that that was a uh, <laughs> That <laughs> teachers are <laughs> all miracle workers especially teachers the ones who the have best. to grade homework we'll throw that in there too you know all of them. english teachers they're, 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 they're grading performances yeah they're grading performances yeah. yeah but again like i could give an a like oh look 10 baskets in basketball today wow a. we've tried to help you henry Let's, yeah. it's okay yeah, we've really tried Ryan, all i'm saying that, is that these guys are, a... they're smart to take that job it's a good job it's a fun job <laughs> that was another reason of uh or another example of you being stubborn Yes, you know, you're oh, like, I'm, I'm, yeah. I never do. I, I <laughs> especially, especially as a kid, the all the stories stubborn. we hear. Yes. Exactly. I, I don't know what to the, say. As I hear more and more stories, I'm like, oh, God, your poor mother. Oh, God, our future kids. <laughs> My friend was like mad at me. He was like, one. dude, what is wrong with you? Why wouldn't you tap out? <laughs> I said I wouldn't. <laughs> what is wrong with you? What's wrong with the kid who's trying to choke you out? <laughs> he was like, trying to prove that I was a liar. No, th but there's no need to do that. So that's why Ryan didn't, because he was like, oh, he's trying to prove that I'm a liar, yeah. so I'm not going to tap out. Wow. I don't lie. Like, but, but again, like if, if Zach were to say right now, oh, I never tap out, neither of us is going to like grab him by it's the neck we're and not be like, 12. Idiot. exactly. <laughs> that, the, the other little psycho is the problem, not you. Anyways. It's all just young boys. I wish you three of us could teach a gym class. I want a football From team. From everything you just said. Oh, football team. Yeah, I don't gym teachers. You want to teach a gym class now. That's he what I'm saying. That'd be an incredible <laughs> job. It'd be so much fun. In his defense, he was saying that. Okay, okay. He also it said it was so easy, but also any gym teacher who's watching this would probably be like, yeah, your job is easy too. You talk about the Broncos. Yeah, that is also and true. Yeah, have yeah, yeah. Again, like, what I would not want to do is be like an English teacher who goes home and reads shitty essays mm. after school. Like you got your bells in gym class and then bang, it's over. You still have to plan out your... Yeah. <laughs> anyways. You got to pull out the dodgeball. Anyways, 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 let's get to uh, questions. <laughs> yes, we shall uh, get yeah, to the questions. Hold on, real quick. Andreev says, hearing about RK's stubbornness explains why he took so long to renew his passport. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Oh, man, you should have heard me. Everyone was like, bro, you have to get your passport. I was like, no, I really don't. Like, Ryan literally was like, I could get it tomorrow if I needed it. Like, I have text messages of Brandon and Lindsay being so stressed out, and he's like, it's fine, guys. <laughs> Everyone is more stressed out than me until the last two weeks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then yep. no one could have possibly been more stressed out than me. <laughs> oh man, could you imagine that trip without you? No. Like you couldn't imagine it. That's for sure. I actually like several times when I was just having an amazing time there. Yeah, was just thinking to myself like, wow, <laughs> I almost missed this just because I'm an idiot. I think the funniest thing of all of that is the fact that the day that Ryan was like so stressed and panicking, he had to film an explainer talking about how awesome London was oh going to be, gosh. and he had no idea if he was going to be able to go. Oh, we man. should probably pull that video. After, you can probably like see the yeah. pain <laughs> in my eyes. Yeah. He like literally was just so sad. He was like, I have to go home. That was the worst thing I've done. Oh, no. <laughs> well, you made it. I made it. It was amazing. It worked. Uh, Stubbornness didn't matter then. And I can't wait for all of our new friends that we made in London to be Buffs fans. Mm. Because wow. we have two, two yep. players on the roster now from London, sure. England. About to be three. We're going to really? get a third. Wow. I mean, how many wow. play college football players are there? In the country from London. I don't Probably know. Probably about to be three. Probably three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All I know is the third one has a 45-inch vertical. It would have been the number one vertical sure in the like NFL draft last year. Centimeters? Wow. Oh, Are you sure that? Who is checking their rulers really out 45 there? 45 meters. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. I don't, yeah. I don't trust their measurements of American units there. Uh, I'm pretty sure the <laughs> jumping was done in America. <laughs> oh. Okay, well then it's legit. The it's other like, ones that was at the Under Armour All American game yesterday. What if right Dang now it. I pulled out like a thing that's like, oh, this is a meter, and just gave it to you? How confident You're would you be? Pulling out something that's a meter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> yeah. But like, you have Congrats. to look at it and be like, yes, these are centimeters, or no, they're not. You're telling me you couldn't you're, do I, it. I absolutely know the length of a centimeter. But what if it was like a centimeter and a half? You'd be able to tell the difference. Between that and a centimeter? Yeah. Yes. If I they both so. said one centimeter? I think so. Okay. I think I would. Well, maybe. Yeah. I just feel like centimeters are like square. 
<laughs> Are you what sure you're you not said? thinking of square it centimeters? No sense. It's exactly how I was envisioning <laughs> yes. it in my head. Yes. yes. It's like the size of the width of your pinky nail. I'm yeah. thinking like graph paper. Yep. 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 Oh. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, okay. I don't think they have anything that's the length of an inch there, though. I don't even think they teach their kids what an inch is. Here well, in no science one does class, outside of here, exactly. So here in science class, we hear about centimeters. They never hear about inches. You could tell these people that it's like two inches is one inch. They'd have no idea. That's why there'd be no guys checking have been trying process. to do that for years. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, these early shows. I feel like the coffee hasn't hit anyone, and yeah. they always just go off the rails. That is true. All right, that's a good thing. <laughs> it's not a bad thing. Let's hit these questions. The first question here is J R G Martinez fifty said the big question is Have you changed R K? Oh, have I that is the big question. Oh, have I changed as yeah. a human? Yeah. I thought you were talking about how I changed from my gym clothes. <laughs> <in eighth grade. laughs> Your stubbornness. That would explain the scent. Oh, no. the scent from the left side. <laughs> no, I have not changed. You have not changed, no. No. You've changed. Yeah, I don't know. I've I mean, not. I have changed in ways, just not in becoming less He's stubborn. He's still stubborn. Has anybody <laughs> ever said, like, you've changed in real life? Or is it just like in those, like, cheesy oh, yeah. girl movies? Yeah. I don't know. Hey, I mean, me and my friends say it to each other like as a bit. They don't have to be girl movies. <laughs> okay, it's mostly girls who enjoy those. It's what? a bit. I said everyone can enjoy those movies. It doesn't have to be specific. But when I, I say cheesy girl movies. movie, you know exactly the movie I'm talking about. Hallmark. Yeah, like those. Yeah. AJ yeah. loves Hallmark. Yeah. Well, there we go. If I said cheesy AJ movies, then you could just say you would cheesy have movies. Cheesy movies is yeah. Is that cheesy all? Cheesy movies. Yeah. Well, I mean, or kids, just, kids could, movies are cheesy too, though. Just say Hallmark. Hallmark. I'll use that Hallmark. word. I'm not thinking yeah. of Hallmark movies when I think of the like you've changed. You've changed. Yeah. It's kind of like Disney movies, maybe. No, I, I don't know. Oh, uh, that's it's too adult of a phrase. I keep trying to get this on the rails. I'm usually the one who drives us off. Oh, this has not been my fault today. <laughs> so questions? Uh, yes. yes. One super chat here. From John Clay, uh, who says, Henry is correct. Loomis was an executive for both the Pellies and the Saints simultaneously. Was he making... It's a bad decision from both franchises. Yes. Was he making sports decisions? Yeah. I mean, I think mostly it was just the hiring process. It was like okay. directing... Because ba vice president of basketball operations. And I think he was also GM slash vice president of football with the Saints. But again, because it's owned by the same people. I mean, so, but that's still, I mean, John Elway was, he yeah. started off as a vice president of football operations. That's making football moves. Yeah. But so at the same time, though, it's like he was making <clears throat> basketball just, moves. That's what I, I don't but imagine. Look. Imagine Pat Bolin is like, okay, we, we just bought the Nuggets. I need to go hire a basketball coach. Are you going to go like look in the basketball world for somebody you don't know and be yes. like, oh, yes, yes. no, I'd be like, no, no way. I'd be like, you know who I really want in the room with me? John is this guy. Elway? I'd be like, yes, this guy who has been right here for a decade and a half, who is like my, basically like my business partner when it comes to, to making sports, my sports franchises. Like you are why that is just what, but I mean, you're not on not your own. Different. Apparently the, the new Orleans people did it. Like, it's not about going out there and like scouting basketball players. Like you wouldn't want them in that role, but in terms of finding like the leadership qualities and that sort of stuff, I would like, I feel like you definitely lean on that guy. Someone who like knows the sport in and out. Yeah. Really? A hundred percent. I just don't think that part's so important when you talk when you're hiring well, a coach. Well then you should feel great about the Broncos head coaching search. Yeah, it's very true. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I do true. feel great about it. I mean that that's essentially like the let's say they fire George Payton next <laughs> Monday and Greg Penner, not a football guy, says Shoot, who's a good executive in tat? Let's bring Joe Sackick Joe Sackick, on yeah. to help yeah. us hire the Broncos' next head coach. But the I difference mean, is they they haven't been like if Joe Sackick just has to choose between Jim Harbaugh and Sean <laughs> well, Payton. That's true. The it's probably worse. Yeah. That is true. But it would be different though because it'd be like also our friend Joe Sackick, who we've talked to every day for yeah. 15 years. We would like for him to be involved in this process. Like that just makes sense. I just feel like you don't have to give him that title yeah, to yeah. have him in. Yeah, the just have him as a consultant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. he gets more money, and you just say like, "It's true." You're you're overseeing all this. If you see something that doesn't seem to be working, you're the guy who pulls yeah. the trigger. I mean, it's that's just wild. That's I wonder why he stopped you know being the only because only it's weird. Yeah, but I wonder why he stopped doing that for the Pelicans. They just suck probably because they were bad. Yeah, probably. It could be. It could <laughs> and they're be. like, "Wait, you don't know basketball, it could be. do you?" And he's that's like, possible. No, I don't. Like, He's oh, like, okay, you're fired. I was just trying to hire football people this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I got Zion. No wonder it didn't work. Yeah, exactly. That's very be a true. Great football team. Yeah. 
Uh, um, all right. <laughs> All right, we have some questions on the website now. First one from Seymour72. It says, gentlemen, greetings from the UK. Enjoyed yesterday's Jerry Rosberg uh, Evero discussion. Whether he stays or not, I've loved listening to Jerry's articulate and grown-up answers at recent press conferences and not just getting stock phrases and coach speak. He listens to the question, considers his response, and gives a full answer. Very refreshing. Cheers, Christopher. Hey, Christopher. As we pulled up a Christopher comment on the feed, too. Double Christopher. Wow. Double Christopher. Wow. 72 jumping in twice. Gotta, wow. He's got to be one of my new London Buffs fans. Or yeah. UK Buffs fans. I bet. Wow. True. Um, yeah, and here he is again in the comments section saying, Greetings from England, all. I think GP is a pretty good GM. We could do a lot worse. Please, can we have some continuity? And I know nope. where uh, our guy C. Fillmore really wants continuity. That is with the Broncos' left guard. He does not want Dalton Reisner to mm. go. Because he has a Dalton Reisner jersey. And because he likes yeah. him. Yeah, sorry. Oh, no. I will sorry, Chris. Oh, no. <laughs> If I had to make an official prediction, obviously Dalton Reisner is gone. But the second half is that the Broncos get worse at left guard this offseason. Mm. I think they lose him and they get worse. And everybody says, why did you let Dalton go? It all just feels so predictable. Like upgrading an offensive line position is maybe the toughest thing to do in football besides fix a quarterback or add a quarterback. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's not a crazy thing to say. I think it's what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, that would be unfortunate. It would be. And next comment coming in from our Vada Luke says, Hello, friends. Welp, Broncos didn't make the playoffs, so I'll be submitting my official apology. What charity does the, the pod deem worthy of benefiting Ooh. from the Broncos' awful season? A couple questions regarding the coaching search. If you could get any coach cost-free from another team or retirement or anywhere, who would the best possible coach for the Broncos be? If you had to rehire a Broncos position or assistant coach from a previous administration back to the same position for his, this next staff, who would it be? His answers are Kyle Shanahan. Is Kyle Shanahan, was he ever a coach for the Broncos? He's just saying any coach. So oh, the first oh, question oh. is any coach retired with the team right now, you get any coach. And then any the other one is in the ever? Prime? any coach ever. Well, We're taking Kyle Shanahan? <laughs> hey, he's going to be coach of the year. <laughs> just take Bill Walsh. Yeah, I mean... Tough to not go that direction. Um, do you guys consider Bill Belichick? Absolutely. No, uh, I've already oh. decided all of his success Tom. was due to Tom. Tom. Was Bill Walsh because of Steve Young and Joe Montana? No, he invented them. Oh, he, he invented okay. Them. okay. I, I like that. Um, uh, you guys considering bringing Mike back as a head coach? Like no. tier like, two? No. He's tier two. Wait, well, you, do you get him in their Pat, prime though? Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm considering it for sure. I mean, of all Broncos coaches... He would be the one. He's got to be, right? By a mile. I mean, you bring Mike, and then... Do you do both Mike's? Mike Munchak, too? Mike and Mike. Just have your offensive line and offense be great? <laughs> That'd be pretty good. You or bring Gibbs. Wade back? You bring back Gibbs. Yeah, yeah you could bring back you Gibbs. Just, yeah, you'd bring, you'd, it'd be Wade Phillips. Was he ever on Mike Shanahan's staff? I don't think so. I don't think so, either. No. So it's not a total... Just so there that. you go. You could do defensive coordinator there. Yep. That's pretty good. <laughs> I would still, legitimately, if I'm Jim Harbaugh or Sean Payton, I would still be interested in bringing Wade as my defensive coordinator. Right now? Yes. If, if he wanted it, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no reason not to. Yeah. yeah. If he wanted and it. And for him, it's always kind of short term. Like His success yeah. just takes off early yep. and then kind yep. of tapers yep. off. So just be like, Wade, give me one year. Yep. Let's go win a bunch of games and... With, you improve your resume. We've got great players. With how much campaigning he's done in the past year, I think he'd be all about it. Yeah. How old do you think he is? 70. 74. 75. I was pretty oh, close, yeah. Wow. Yeah, no, I mean, there's a reason he hasn't coached in the NFL. But again, like, <laughs> he's matter. still doing things. And, like, the last time he around. coached, everyone was like, wow, he connects with the players so yeah, well still. That's true. Yeah. And that would be the one concern you'd have with an older coach. He's literally dabbing with Von Miller on the <laughs> sidelines. Yeah. yeah. But again, oh, it's like man. old man bits. It's like, well, look, this guy, we can give him the... It's like hilarious. It's like the Kirk Cousins chain thing. You know, It was literally Wade Phillips wearing a Keebs chain. Exactly. Like, it's the exact <laughs> same thing. Exactly. It's like, That's... look at this guy. He's like a toy. We're playing dress up with Wade. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> do it again. I'm so yeah. in. Dress him up. You bringing a key back then? Yeah, I'm bringing if Keith back as my to, secondary oh, coach. Oh, that would be so much fun. Oh, that'd be incredible. <laughs> it, I don't. Wow, this it does <clears> remind <throat> me of a thing you said earlier, where it's like if you get Harbaugh or Peyton, you you have continuity. There's a chance that Harbaugh flames out, I think, and he's gone in like two years. But that was a side point because I really think Akib Talib is either great or just totally flames out. Uh, totally flames out. As a coach? Kinda, I mean, it's he was 50-50. great in the broadcast. Oh, he was. Too. Like, yeah. I think he's just one of those people who's really good at things. Yeah. I think so too, but. If somebody said, like, 
it comes back from the future a year from now is like, yeah, they moved on for Akeem to leave, and everybody said that was a good idea. <laughs> You'd right. be like, huh, yeah, yeah, I see how that happened. One yeah. thing that I don't think people know about Akeem, unless they've heard me say it on this show, <laughs> is that uh, he might be a trend. Studies <laughs> harder than anyone. Yeah. Yeah. Hardest, hardest uh, film, hardest film studier I've ever seen mm-hmm. in the secondary ever. That speaks to why he was so good. Yep. Yep. And I think that and that type of work ethic yeah. and desire would translate really well to coaching. Yeah, uh, 100%. Mm-hmm. And just his personality. Like, oh, who, everyone wants to be around <laughs> oh, him. Oh, oh, oh. Yes. <laughs> He'd be so much fun. Yeah. Give wow. me a weekly press conference with the key. Oh, i got to make him DC then. <laughs> would, true. Would he get a fine from the NFL in his first season as a DB's coach? Yes. Yeah. I think so, too. For sure. Which is crazy. Definitely. Like mixing it up on the sideline <laughs> exactly. with yeah. a player, yeah. but it's like that stuff just doesn't happen very often. It could no. be, it could be good though, especially with like a a Jim Harbaugh staff. Like if you're just leaning into like we're just tough, we're mm. mean, we just want to yep. beat the hell out of you. Here's a key to leave. He's literally gonna <laughs> fight you on the sideline. Yeah, there would be something for sure. Oh, there would be. Man, he'd be yanking someone's chain. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably. All right, I think that's all we have. That's it. What a show. What a show. That was fun. Ooh. We have one comment here. Today's episode feels a lot like this season at parts where we're like, wow, this is looking good. And then there's points where we're like, how did we get here? True. Okay. Okay. True. I'll take that. It, it's better than bad. Yes. How know? did we get yeah, here? It's better than here? <laughs> there are parts where you never <laughs> want to be a part of this ever again. Like when you're watching the Broncos on Christmas Day and oh. they're losing by 40 points. How did we get here? I think I might try to be like a substitute teacher this spring. Wow. I've kind of been thinking about this for the last half hour or so. You I know you have to be qualified to do that. Oh, do you hear to the, yeah. do to you the hear people in charge of Montana? Hey. No, like literally it'll be like a kid who graduated last year who's no like in college. Way. Like yeah, yeah that's yeah. what happens no, no. like all of Christmas break for yeah, college. Yeah, they're up there. Teacher. No, um no. Let substitute. me just say something to <laughs> the talk, people talk in charge of hiring at Denver Public Schools and anywhere else. For the love of God, do not hire him. Because the thing is, I don't need that job. I would just be doing it for fun. So I could toe the line. Toe, and if I accidentally cross it, and I was like, Henry, you can't call a kid an asshole. We oh have to, we have to be done. I want this I'd to be like, happen yeah, so you can goes. come back and realize how not fun that is. How hard no, no, no. it is. But again, like, it's, I wouldn't be going there thinking, I hope I have a good day today. I'd be going there thinking, like, these kids are really in for it. Like, like they, I'm, they oh, are not. The show. Wow. Let's not, end the show. Let's end the show. So deeply unqualified you're such for this. A bad teacher, you, I can't Henry. believe your oh, substitutes yeah. are in qualified. Colorado. It's not that way. So you can That's talk crazy. to Kylie about it. Yeah, you <laughs> no, like legitimately, it's like, oh yeah, Christmas break, University of Montana. Our substitute teachers for these two weeks before their Christmas break, there's gonna be kids who graduated the last at two at the years. university. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? No, they're all like nineteen, twenty. <laughs> except now, for I, you have. That's not true. That can't be. Yeah, possible. it's absolutely it can't true. It can't no, it's it can't absolutely be true. No, I have friends who like, like Ty. Have you guys met Ty who came down here? No, like when we graduated, he was teaching my sister during during spring break because it's like a hundred bucks a day. <laughs> That's what he told you. <laughs> oh, oh, my oh boy! God. We're oh boy! The show. <laughs> we'll see you guys oh, tomorrow. Goodness.